Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. How are you? It's afternoon where I am. Cuckoo. I mean, grandmother just chimed. Cuckoo's a little fast. I hope you're well. We are well. I'm Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey, where I like to talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic protocol, how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, regain control of your life, like I did. So today, I'm going to jump right on in. Um, those of you who, who have listened to me a little bit, and particularly uh, patrons who hear from me a lot, I mean like every day, may recognize that I am not someone who dwells on food as far as talking about this protocol. I recommend stepping away from videos about food, away from cookbooks, away from Facebook groups. You know, like when there's a, a Facebook group with 5,000 members about chaffles, which supposedly have two ingredients and you need a group to talk about chaffle recipes, supposed to be two ingredients, step away from that. And I, I'm going to tell you why that's my philosophy and why I chose the topic today of what we eat, which sounds contradictory. If you are hearing my voice, if you're listening to me, it is possible probable even, that you have had struggles with weight and health and relationships with food. You know, someone who's fit and happy, not listening to me, because they're fit and happy. Now, I am fit and happy, but I wasn't always. As a matter of fact, I spent 30 years from my mid-20s to my mid-50s morbidly obese, I can't share photos on these live streams, but if you go to my blog, link below, caseydurango.com, and look at my photos, my before photos, you'll see I was very heavy. And those are not photos of me at my heaviest. During those years, I felt, you know, food was not love for me. It was not, it, it was torture. I, I, felt a I, I felt like I was a victim of food. I wasn't a victim of food. I made bad choices, some of it based on bad information, bad recommendations, terrible advice, some of it because, you know, food is all wound up with lots and lots and lots of things. So I, I've had to work my way through that, but the best thing I ever did was start the ketogenic protocol for real. I knew that low carb worked for me since 1977. But on January 8th, 2014, I needed to make a change. I was still very heavy. I was not particularly any heavier than I had been. I was at my cruising fat weight. I just felt bad physically and emotionally, e-mentally, as we say around Go Keto with Casey. And I didn't want it to have to take insulin for type 2 diabetes, and I knew that was the next conversation that was going to come up the next time I saw a doctor. For those of you who know my story briefly, I've been diagnosed and treated for cancer three times in my life from my from the time I was pregnant with our third child straight on through. And um, I could deal with that, but I couldn't deal with the idea of taking insulin for type 2 diabetes. So I Googled how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes, came across the white coat video of Dr. Eric Westman of Duke University, now a person I'm happy to call a friend. And it was the simple, the, the message was very simple. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total carbs, not net. If it's not on page four, there is a link below. Don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry and stop when you're satiated. I'm not sure he said the last one, but I, that's what I do. So one of the great victories for me personally is that food is no longer the boss of me. Um, Previous to my T-shirt that reads, I'm stronger than a cookie, go keto with Casey, my best-selling T-shirt was, food is not the boss of me. Not having intrusive thoughts of food all day was victory. Not having joint pain. I mean, not just my fingers. I always do this when I say joint pain, but my neck, my shoulders, my hips, my knees, my ankles, my elbows, everything hurt. No more. And keep in mind, I'm, I'm seven years older now. 
and I feel better. And stepping away from the food gives me more time in my day, gives me more brain space. We spend less on groceries now than we used to. By the way, my husband, who never had a weight issue and does not have an unhealthy relationship with food, never has had, is very fit, is a cyclist, you know, strong guy. He's doing this for his own health, not for weight control. He put a little wee bit of weight after he turned 50, and that, that was gone overnight. Almost, almost, literally. So I do not advocate focusing on food. It's like someone in recovery from alcohol who keeps looking at cocktail recipes. Right? Step away from the food. Food is not love. Love is love. Food is not or should not be entertainment or sport. Food should be fuel. So that said, why is the topic what we eat? Because I don't want you to focus on the food. But I, I simply must take the counsel of my lovely mate who, you know, he's my consigliere, who has told me gently several times over the years, people are confused about the food. And I get enough questions. You know, when will you go back to eating regular food? And what do you eat in a day? Can you please share what you eat in a day? Do you have a meal plan? Okay, I have done what we eat, what I ate today videos. I, they're old. I haven't made one in a long time. I now have what we eat, and it's on my blog again if you go under behind the scenes what we eat. But it's not how to create fake versions of the food that got me fat in the first place. It's just not everybody knows how to make a meatloaf. And I have a fantastic meatloaf recipe, I'm going to tell you. Fantastic. It's one of our favorite meals. And you can see that at my blog. Uh, so what do we eat? Well, I'm going to take a... I eat, uh, we eat what we always ate. We just lay off the carbs. What's in my freezer right now? A couple of steaks, eye of round, salmon, pork belly, pork chops, chicken thighs, chicken drumsticks, We've had, we just don't have any right now, Italian sausages from Costco, lamb, we just finished up with the scallops and the shrimp. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other, oh, I have a frozen pizza crust. No, it's not a pizza crust. It is, I make, when I'm by myself, if I want, feel like, you know, I'm going to have something, I'll just make just the toppings. I'll just sprinkle mozzarella cheese, a tablespoon of Rayo's marinata sauce, a couple of pepperonis, maybe a little bit more shredded cheese, put it under the broiler for 90 seconds, and I just eat it right off of the sill pad. But, oh my goodness. And I, I, I caught my attention. Jan, thank you for the super chat. Thank you very much. For those of you who don't know super chat, Jan just made, it, it will pin Jan's comment to the top for a while, because a lot of the comments go by so quickly, I will never see them. Jan writes, I love your keep it simple approach and focusing on the basics. Thanks for all you do. Well, thank you. Thank you. Just trying to earn my keep here, y'all. So, and we have some frozen vegetables, frozen green beans, frozen broccoli, uh, frozen cauliflower, frozen asparagus. We're out of Brussels sprouts. I'm trying to grow all of those in our garden. We'll see what happens. I don't eat many vegetables. So what we eat are fatty sources of protein. The fat that comes with the protein. What does that mean? No, we don't have MCT oil anywhere in this house. It's never been here. We don't load up our coffee with butter or coconut oil. I do have coconut oil here. I use it when I saute very light things like salmon and scallops and shrimp. Otherwise, we, we cook in bacon fat, reserved bacon fat. We have bacon. Oh, for heaven's sake, we have bacon. Breakfast sausages. I like ling sausages sometimes, and sometimes I like sausage patties. We have eggs. These are, we're kind of low right now. These are from our backyard, these are from our girls. We have avocados on the counter. You can't see them because it's dark. We have tomatoes. We don't eat a lot of tomatoes. We don't eat giant tomatoes every day because they're, okay, and on the food list, 
the food list, you don't need a food list, but what's on there are fatty sources of protein. So if it has a face or if it came from a creature that had a face, I guess if it is a creature, it had a face like dairy products, fine. Dairy products, full fat, but not unlimited. Non-starchy vegetables, but not unlimited. Some some people think, oh, vegetables are free. They're, they're zero points, whatever we were raised to believe. If that works for you, great. But if you're taking, as Dr. Westman calls it, prescription strength keto, if you want it to work the first time, every time, limit the non-starchy vegetables to one cup a day before they're cooked. And leafy greens, two cups a day. Maximum. There is no minimum requirement for vegetables. Fruit, as most of us think of fruit, is not on the list. You know, avocado is technically a fruit. So is tomato, technically a fruit. But it kind of, you know, what is that old, old Campbell's commercial? It's a soup that eats like a meal. Well, tomatoes and avocados are fruits that eat like a vegetable. But they're not unlimited. That's where my carbs come from, for, for the most part. There's carbs in everything believe it or not. And there's protein in every food and there's carbs, fat in every food, except according to Zoe Harkham, there is no, there's no carbohydrate in lard, which is rendered animal fat. And there is no fat in fructose, which is sugar. Okay. So there you go. What do we eat? Uh, last night, now we don't eat three meals a day. Even my lovely mate who is active and is a dude, he's a little bit younger than I am. Um, even he does not eat three meals a day. But we eat eggs and bacon, a couple of mugs of coffee with heavy cream measured in it because heavy cream is not unlimited. Uh, most days when he works and comes home for lunch, you know, my mother always said, I took you for better or for worse, but not for lunch. But my husband comes home for lunch and it's okay. It works for us. I make him egg drop soup. You can see how I make that. Go to my blog, egg drop soup. And then a, a plate of fuel in the evening, but it, they, the plates themselves are getting smaller and smaller, have gotten smaller and smaller. So last night I had salmon ready to prepare and he just said, I'm fine. So he made some cheese crackers that he makes from American cheese. There's a video about that. Super easy and a lot less expensive, like super less expensive than moon cheese or what's the, what's the other brand? Wisps. It's American cheese. Put it in a microwave. 62 seconds or something. So we ate some of that and he had some coffee. I didn't have anything. I was not hungry. This not eating, if not hungry, takes some getting used to. And we have to get, we have to get prepared for the idea that we don't need as much food as we've been eating. Duh. You know, if we are obese, overweight, we've been eating more fuel than we require. And if we've been, you know, compounding that by eating fuel that is designed to push fat into our body cells, carbs, glucose, pancreas, insulin, get the glucose out, push it into the body as fat cells, then it makes it worse. You know, you didn't get to be as perfectly round as I was without eating too much food. So I, you know, I copious vast quantities like a cone head, right? Now I don't eat that much. What have I eaten today? Well, one of it is super secret, so I can't tell you. But I had some shredded uh, chicken breast today. Just I didn't just grabbed it out of the free or fridge, and I had some stuff to do, and I went <coughs> and ate it, and that was it. So probably half an ounce of shredded chicken breast from Costco, the rotisserie chicken breast. And I don't know what we'll have later. If my husband rides his bicycle today, he'll get a ribeye. No, he's going to get salmon. But he will get a smoothie because cyclists get smoothies, but not with bananas and all that stuff in it. Fun fact, gram for gram, there is more potassium in avocado than there is in banana, and bananas are sugar. Um, what's, in our, uh, what's in our pantry? 
there's not a lot of food in our pantry, you know, like that's shelf stable, as opposed to the old days when you might have boxes of, you know, Cheerios. We thought Cheerios were good for us because there was, you know, low fat and chips and things like that. No, there's canned salmon, canned tuna, petite dill pickles, which are good in a pinch. Um, I'm, I'm going through in my brain. Rayo's marinata sauce. I get it when it's on sale. Um, it's the lowest carb sauce that I have found. If our tomatoes come in in our garden, like I'm hoping, then I will be making my own sauce. I'm using it sparingly. What sardines are in our pantry? That's kind of it. Uh, my husband likes orange sugar-free Jello. I I'm okay with it. I could take it or leave it. I don't need it. Uh, there is in our fridge. There are like three types of cheese. There's queso fresco that he eats with his breakfast every morning of his life. He scrambles three or four eggs, two slices of thick bacon from Costco. We do not worry about. You know, it's got sugar and it. it's negligible. And in about an ounce of queso fresco. I'm going to start making my own mayonnaise because we have so many eggs. So there, But there was mayonnaise. Mustard. Condiments are an excellent thing. If you're looking for some flavor, mustard is a great tang. We have uh, no added sugar ketchup just for a little. Oh, we have ground beef. We have hamburger patties, Angus burgers from Costco. And I also have the chubs, which are a pound of ground beef to make the meatloaf and things like that. We have Jimmy Dean breakfast sausage, which I also put in the meat love. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. We have homegrown blueberries, which I put in my husband's smoothies. We have like five blueberry bushes. Best year ever on the blueberries, if I can get to m most of them before the birds do. And I'm not going to put up bird netting because I've done that other years and I catch birds in them and I find them dead. <gasps> Lori Mikos, thank you so much. Four dollars, forty dollars super chat. Lori writes, forty pounds down. Oh gosh, forty pounds down so far, and you have encouraged me through the live streams and Patreon chats. Looking forward to the next forty and beyond. You remind us all to keep it simple, and keeping it simple is very powerful. Thank you, Lori. She's a patron. I'm going to give a quick shout out to patrons because I know several here. Uh, I have a private Patreon support group. It is truly a support group. As I've often said, people join it, I think, not to get access to me, but to each other. Depending on your pledge level, I do 20 pre-recorded video snippets a month, first thing in the morning, and the, the patrons choose the topics from a spreadsheet I publish to them. I do a handful of patron-only live streams on Crowdcast in a handful of patron-only video group sessions a month. I am no longer taking new one-on-one -on -one uh, persons through Patreon uh, because busy, so, booked, booked. So thank you very much for that. And and under the Shameless Commerce Division, apologies to the to the Car Talk guys. Uh, I do have some merch. Let me preface this: you don't have to buy one thing to be one hundred percent successful at this protocol. There's certainly not a food, special food that you need to buy. If it says keto on the label, please avoid it. Ain't such a thing. But I do have some merchandise because I am trying to earn my keep. So this is a, in my Teespring shop. This is a steel water bottle. It's quite large. Go keto with Casey and silliness on the back with my mug and eggs and stuff. I mean, my mug meaning my face. This has been a great seller. I thought I was out of these and I found a stash. A magnet. Are you here out of hunger or out of habit? And if hunger's not the problem, food is not the answer. Go keto with Casey. Because eating out of habit is a thing that can be found at my blog under swag, as can this spiral bound journal, Go Keto with Casey 12 month journal. I purposely did not put dates on it because you don't have to wait till the first of the month or the first of the week or the first of the year. You don't have to wait until after, you don't have to wait till Monday. Start right now. I started midday on a Wednesday. 
And this, you can, it's the same thing, but it's perfect bound. This you can get at Amazon. It's a couple of dollars less expensive. You will get it faster. And um, because Amazon, this one, frankly, is probably the better option for writing in because it's spiral bound. Okay, there you go. Done. I recommend, now there is something called the psychology of subtraction. People hear a diet protocol because we've had these for so many years. It's what you can't eat. And of course, this is a lay off the carbs, but you feel like something's being taken away. But here's the beauty. And some of you will attest to this and maybe you already have. What you can eat, the things, the things we have avoided, the delicious things we've avoided for years. Poultry with the skin. <gasps> and we know that the skin is the best part. Just We just don't bread it. You don't need to bread. You can have fried chicken drumsticks. Delish. They can be deep fried. They can be in an air fryer. You don't need the breading. It's about flavor. Put the right seasoning. Let it marinate in Frank's hot sauce. Sometimes I'll just sprinkle garlic powder and some cayenne pepper. And I'll put them in the air fryer. But, oh, they're so good. Chicken thighs, dark meat. Ribeye with the fat that, because someone wrote me and asked me, what is it just the marbling inside or can we eat the fat that's on the end of the ribeye? Oh, yes, absolutely. That's the, I start on that end. Eggs with the yolks. I don't understand anyone recommending leaving off egg yolks. I don't understand it. One thing, that's where most of the nutrition is. It's where the flavor is. To me, doing anything with just an egg white is a waste of an egg. Unless some recipes call it for fluffiness or whatever, you can do something, but I don't get that fancy. Um, oh, beef liver, that's another thing we eat. Now, some, you know, some people are skeeved out, but I used to not like beef liver. Then I grew to tolerate it. A little bit went a long way, and now sometimes I just look forward to it. And it is highly nutritious. I saute up a, some white onion in some bacon fat in my skillet you know, cast iron skillet. I was going to do a little series called cast iron keto, but I think that's been taken. And then take the onions out. I think I've made a video on how to cook beef liver. And I throw the beef liver in, saute it up, a dollop of heavy cream to make a creamy sauce. It is fantastic and so nutritious. What else do we eat? We make our own Five Guys burgers. So we get the burger, saute up mushrooms, onions, and jalapeno peppers. Slice of cheese if we wish. Wrap it in a cabbage leaf. Again, you can find that at my blog, What We Eat. I'm not looking for a way to make a fake bun. Because just because something might be very low carb, what, we don't, what I don't eat are foods that might, for whatever reason, I don't understand what pathways are wanting me to eat more and more mashed cauliflower? If I'm making mashed cauliflower, which I do, I have to prepare myself in advance that I'm going to have a small amount of it and that's it. And then I announced to my lovely mate, I'm not eating any more cauliflower, dude. And he says, okay. Not that he would say boo to me if I did. So mashed cauliflower for me. Peanut butter. An issue, and there's a vat of peanut butter in my pantry for the stupid chipmunks. Stupid chipmunks manage to eat the peanut butter and the seeds and don't trip the trap. So they are getting to eat the peanut butter and I can't, little jerks. I can eat it, but I have to, I have to limit, I, I, I don't want to fight with myself about food anymore. By the way, peanuts, not on page four. Nuts are not on page four. Peanuts are not nuts. They are legumes. I should think of peanut butter as pinto bean butter. Ugh. Because they're about the same. You can hear my chickens in the background there. What do we eat? We eat whatever you eat. We just lay off the carbs. We lay, we lay off the breading on anything fried. We still fry things. We just don't have breading around it. We don't eat rice. We don't eat bread. We don't eat pasta. We don't eat, um, we certainly do not eat sweets. We don't. And, and we're a pretty good example. I really needed to do this. My husband decided to do this for his own health and longevity and 
uh, what we don't eat, we don't eat keto products and we don't take supplements. We're quite healthy. I take a magnesium, slow release magnesium, MAG64, which is the generic formulation of slow MAG, which is magnesium chloride, because I've always been prone to muscle cramps, even before all of this. That's it. So go figure. Now, so I'm going to say this one more time that I'm going to turn to people making comments and asking questions. What do we eat? We eat the food we've always eaten. We just don't eat the carbs. The vegetables we consume, and frankly, my husband consumes more of them than I. He can tolerate more than I. And, and I'm just not that interested. I'm not anti-veg. I like vegetables. And I certainly hope we get at least one of each of the ones I've planted. A broccoli, a cauliflower, a cabbage, a Brussels sprout, an okra. What's an, uh, I guess an okra pod. A tomato, another tomato, another tomato. We have like five types of tomatoes. A zucchini. And a cuke. I'd be thrilled if we get those. Next year will be different. This was a learning year for me. I've grown vegetables before, but this was a whole different experience. Okay, so. There's no special food. It's just laying off the carbs. That's it. And if the word keto is on the package, run away. So thank you. I'm going to increase my screen so I can see a little bit better. Yeah, Shell uh, F writes, liver is the ultimate multivitamin. Tis, hey, Christina Polischik, my favorite. Egg yolks. I know. Why leave off the egg yolks? Oh, by the way, we drink coffee. I drink alcohol. My, my husband doesn't drink alcohol. Uh, he stopped drinking alcohol when he was in his teens because he's smart and he saw what it did to him. And he said, I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, but I drink alcohol. I have done throughout the entire time. Uh, wine and spirits. I'm, I'm, I'm more towards spirits these days. And my favorite is a, a, really, I cap off my day with a cold gin and tonic with a squeeze of lime. Oh, my, my hashtag Casey's pink drink. I asked about this each time. Glass full of ice, diet tonic water, a splash of diet cranberry juice and a thing of lime. That's it. Mary T writes, it just kills me when my non-keto friends are so horrified at my eggs and bacon and butter and ribeyes, yet complain about their aches and pains and extra weight while they eat non-fat yogurt. That sums it up. Thank you for sharing, Mary. I disagree with you, Shell. And I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a suggestion here in general. Shell writes, mashed cauliflower is gross. Don't yuck my yum. Don't say ugly things about people, food that other people like. That's just, just keep it to yourself. Some people think liver is awful, and yet you are expounding that it's the best multivitamin. Don't yuck my yum. My, my older granddaughter taught me that. Okay, Pam War asks, is chicken liver as good as beef liver? If you're asking taste-wise, they taste different. Nutrition-wise, the liver of any animal is the most nutritious part of the animal. And Shell writes, yes, it's very good. Christina Polischik. Oh, lost my mouse again. Hold, please. Ah. I started out my day talking to somebody on the other side of the counter. I mean, they weren't on the other side of the counter. I was on the other side of the counter. Um, okay, let me see. I have to, oh, my mouse is not even working. Never mind. Hey, Trish Fields, Newbert, Casey's Mita. Oh, thank you. Upcoming events. Thank you, Trish. Here's what's coming up. If you are in the Piedmont, North Carolina area on Monday, the 14th, I'm, I'm restarting Casey's Go Keto with Casey's Meetup at Wine Styles at Friendly Center. So it's, you know, you can find all of these events at my blog under my schedule. You can register for it. Okay, so that's coming up. I'm excited. Um. And we have a reserve table outside. It's a little fire pit table, but we won't need a fire pit. And there's no agenda. And there's no selling of anything. But I will bring books if people want them. The week after that will be Wednesday Wine Day with Amy Berger and me on Crowdcast. Again, you can find that on my schedule. And then this, I'm really excited about this. Casey's Keto Connections. 
with Dr. Georgia Ede, June 29th at 7 p.m. Eastern. You can register for that. So I'm, I am talking with people that I want to talk to and ask. The, my first one was with Jackie Eberstein. So I'm really excited about that. And then, of course, the next month starts over the Durham Support Group meetings and all that stuff with Dr. Westman and me. Texas, oh, moving quickly. Okay, Joy Curiel writes, do, do calories matter? Yes, they absolutely do. Now, here's the thing. We don't count calories, but calories count. What, what, what's that all about? If you're following the protocol, keep your carbs very low, which will trigger you burning fat for fuel, which will reduce your appetite and your hunger, you will naturally consume less if you follow the third tenet, which is don't eat if you're not hungry. And many of us eat out of habit. We always eat dinner at this time. You know what? So it takes some relearning and stop when you're satiated. So naturally your food consumption comes down. You know, people talk about time-restricted eating. That's not the phrase they use, but I try not to use the other phrase they use because I think it's silly and inaccurate. But time-restricted eating, why would there be something magical about that? Or eating one, quote, meal a day. What constitutes a meal? For me, last night, a meal for my husband was he made his cheese crackers. That was his meal. Another night, it would be a ribeye with green beans and sliced tomato. So what constitutes a meal? How big is a haystack? It's as big as it is, or it's as small as it is. But what if you just eat the one time a day, but you eat a 96-ounce New York strip, if there is such a thing? You know, if you're going to eat a six-pound steak, but you only eat once a day, you're going to really get fat and feel awful. So yes, calories matter, but you don't have to count them if you follow if you follow the tenets. On the Durham Support Group meeting on Tuesday, we were talking about something, and I, I, I thought it was rather clever myself. Brought it up, I said, you know, really, you don't even need the four tenets. If you just keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer, the rest takes care of itself. You kind of don't even need page four because if you're really going to keep carbs 20 grams or fewer, you're not eating, all, you barely are eating anything. That's not on page four, right? And you're already limiting vegetables and dairy. Okay. And then your appetite is suppressed, so you don't have to worry about not eating, not hungry. And I said, it's kind of like the major religions. If you just do what Spike Lee's movie said, titled, you know, most of the major religions are just do the right thing. That kind of boils it down. Plus, Wednesday, Wendy said, writes Trish. Trish. Yeah. Um, keto is so simple. Hey, Terry, keto is so simple once you get the hang of it. I am bragging. Been ketified since 2016. Best thing ever. No health issues. Age 60, you can do it, people. Page four. You know, and that's, you know, we've been told that as we get older, even people who are just like turning 40, which is super young now. It must be because my kids, my oldest kid's going to be 40 this year. My mother always said she didn't mind becoming a grandmother, but it really cheesed her off when her children became middle-aged. Um, we've been told, oh, if you haven't gotten it under control by now, it's very difficult. You probably won't be. What a thing, what a message to deliver. You know, it's like, if you haven't given up smoking by age 40, you never will. Just light up. Marie writes, the liver's job in our bodies and animal bodies is to filter out toxins. Can't bring myself to eat liver knowing that, the okay, that's... So that's that's I'm I'm gonna, I'm removing this. I think I I think I removed this from you before. I'm just not gonna have misinformation. Oh, Rosa Burgos. What did Yvonne write? That was ha ha. My Max is not working. This is very irritating to me. Oh, thank you. Joy writes. Thank you. You look fabulous. I will. I'm gonna say this, and people who are patrons can attest. Camera angle, lighting, and makeup helps a lot. Patrons see me with not very good lighting and often no makeup. Christina writes, um, nuts and peanuts, carb heavy, not on page four, big fuller, almond flour. Yeah, almond, almonds are not on page four. Almond flour is not on page four. What do you use almond for to bake things? Now, full disclosure, I 
bake almond cookies for my lovely mate. I grind the almonds and make them. He eats two. They're this big with coffee, but he can tolerate them. I, I just avoid them. I just, it's not a big deal for me to avoid this. Oh, great question. Cindy Walter, can a seven-year-old eat keto the same as an adult? I've said this before. If I had it to do over again, raising our three children, we would have been a keto family. There is absolutely no reason why. Let's think about this. Do we think kids need potato chips or potatoes? There's almost no nutrition in a potato. Do we think kids need candy? No. Do we think kids need pasta? It's all sugar. All those carbs, as far as our liver is concerned, it all comes out as simple sugar. So Dr. Georgie, I want to circle back to this. She's a psychiatrist. She talks about how nutrition impacts mental and emotional health. It's fascinating. I'm really excited to, to do this with her. What do you put in your husband's smoothies? Asks Victoria Rosalda. Okay. A bit of heavy cream, just a bit. A handful of frozen strawberries, a handful of frozen blueberries, a scoop of whey isolate, a little bit of vanilla, and I'll throw an egg in. So it's, you know, flavorful, and he will have gotten back from a 25 or 30 mile bike ride, and it's a, you know, it's a glass this big. Teresa Graham writes, working hard at getting back to keto, playing over and over in my head, just leave off the carbs, just lay off the carbs, just lay off the carbs. People write me, say, hi, I screwed up, how do I get back on? Next time you eat, lay off the carbs. And then the time after that, lay off the carbs. And then the time after that. You know, don't get into the mindset of, oh, I, well, I ate that. I've screwed it up for today. So pass the Cheetos. I'll start over tomorrow, which is never tomorrow. Then it turns into Monday. And then it turns in to the first of next month. And then it turns into after the summer. Lay off the carbs. That's all it is. You don't have to eschew coffee. You don't have to do it if you want to. Do what works for you. We can take things to an extreme. And then it becomes so daunting to other people. It's like, I have to give up everything. No, just keep, lay off the carbs. Guess what? There's no carbs in coffee. Drink the coffee, unless it doesn't agree with you. And there's special rules for alcohol. Hey, ketogenic. Casey is being my, oh. Okay, I'm going to pass over that. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Wonder if I set his carb maximum at 5% of total carbs. You know, I you do what you want to do. I don't worry about percentages. He doesn't need vegetables. This is a very nutrient-dense way to eat. Doesn't need fruit. Fruit is sugar. Nobody needs sugar. Uh, Terry Fraser writes, agreed, Dr. Georgia Eat is doing amazing work. Worth checking out her research. Save the kids from the big pharma drugs. I'm telling you, I'm very excited about this. She And she's a nice person. She's just very approachable. You know, I've told her this. I said, you know, you are like Dr. Westman in that your approach is very understandable. And she speaks in a way that you can relate to the words that are coming out of her mouth. And she's just a great person. So I'm very, very, very excited. As your wing winged writes, you're you're so right. It always becomes tomorrow, Monday, after the next holiday. The eggs in the background are great. We're really very low. At one point, we had 150 eggs, but several have been purchased. I took a dozen to our older son when I saw him the other day. Vicky Diaz writes, "Hi, Casey. I got your shirt. <laughs> I'm stronger than a cookie, and and it, I got such a great co comments from other people with it. Thank you for all your great support. I'm down 85 pounds." using this wonderful plan. Congratulations. Fantastic. Okay. Heather, I mean, writes, how much alcohol can we drink on keto? Again, that is super personalized. And keep in mind, as we grow smaller and by definition older, if we're lucky, we grow older, it, we can find that our tolerance for alcohol changes dramatically. I cannot hang the way I used to. Um, 
So if I'm, you know, this evening when I'm going to have my gin and tonic, it'll be some gin, a whole bunch of ice. I mean, like overflowing and the diet tonic, one of the squeeze of lime, but not a martini. I still have martinis occasionally. I like, a, you know, my, well, I'm not going to share that, that quote from Dorothy Parker, but you know, I like a Manhattan, but I get those when I go out and visit with friends when I can. Um, plus I've never really been able to make a good martini myself. And as we know, a martini is 100% alcohol displaced by an olive. A wine, I also, wine does not sit with me as well as it used to, so I have to be very careful with wine. Find your tolerance, and it can change. Our need for fuel can change. Our tolerance for carbohydrate intake can change. You know, maybe you could do 60 grams per day five years ago. And now maybe you're finding, oh, I stopped losing and now I'm starting to go back up. You might need to adjust it as we grow older or things change. AA says, I saw more eggs once. Yeah, thanks. You you read my info. Love from Poland. Dzień dobry, writes Christina Povlaschik. Ivan Gilman, I lost 32 pounds of our congratulations. And I find keto easy. I rediscovered cabbage and love it. You know, I actually have to watch my cabbage intake. I really like cabbage. Raw, cooked, steamed, stewed. United Arab and ever <laughs> United Arab Emirates BIF video. What's your opinion on carnivore way of eating? I don't have an opinion. All carnivore is keto, not all keto is carnivore. I don't think you need to absolute some people may find that vegetables do not suit them. That's fine. Just like some people find that dairy doesn't suit them. But I, I, I we, we get into encampments. And even within the carnivore community, it becomes an encampment. What about grass-fed, grass-finished, locally sourced? I eat mostly fatty sources of protein and some full-fat dairy. Occasionally have vegetables. I, I don't, I, I have no opinion on it. Do what works for you. <laughs> Victoria Rosella writes, thank you for sharing that we're not slow losers, because I've said I wasn't a slow loser, I was a normal gradual loser. I haven't lost weight in doing the three months now, but feeling great, no joint pain, the weight loss will come. It will. And you might find that your clothes are fitting looser. Mary T writes, been keto since 2018. My motto is keto every day, even on your birthday or on vacation. Or on Tuesday, recently started coaching my sister and niece is so excited to watch them find health. And Lori Mikos writes, went to Five Guys yesterday, got the no bun cheeseburger with a few toppings so good. I was full all day, listened to my body, felt empowered by that. And that's a great way to wrap this up. This is a very empowering way of eating. Food is not the boss of us. So be looking for, if you're in the area, you can, again, find this all at my blog. Go Keto with Casey, meet up in person, no agenda. I am fully vaccinated, by the way. Um, the week after that, Wednesday Wine Day with Amy Berger and me. Again, you can find it at my schedule. That's on Crowdcast. And also on Crowdcast, Dr. Georgia E to me, Casey's Keto Connections. And I've got some other thoughts on future people to, uh, to interview. All right, friends. Thank you so much for allowing me to be part of your Saturday. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total not net. If it's not on page four, link below. Don't eat it. Don't eat it if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. And be sweet. Just don't eat sweets. <laughs>